All right. Uh, I uploaded a video a little bit earlier on this box of obsidian. I took samples, or I broke a lot of these nodules open, but I was I gave away a little bit too much information. So let's let me redo this video and take a little more time. In my excitement, I didn't quite do what I wanted in the video. Anyway, a lot of this stuff looks like it was surface collected. I got it from my friend Dennis. And uh, I do have obsidian here, but this is the latest box that I've received. I have some old stuff I have in my yard, but most of my obsidian is up in Vermont. I'm in Texas right now, so this is a recent box I received. And I'm going to nap this on video in various videos, but today I wanted to show you uh, the differences in this stuff. It, it's all from the same basic area, an area in California. And uh, it's similar in appearance to that moon rock obsidian that I showed in a different video. But these are much larger chunks. Right? So anyway, let me uh, go through these slowly this time so I'm not in a rush I'm not in a rush right now <clears throat> a lot of the stuff is extremely good quality but near the cortex there are issues uh, as usual with surface collected material uh, I'm the one that removed these spalls and exposed the inner parts yeah this looks like the same stuff here. It looks like dacite, but it's not. It, it naps a lot better. It looks like an obsidian. It's kind of a gray, dark charcoal gray. I've also got this, what appears to be uh, what I call black butter obsidian, but it may be called something else. This stuff naps just like mahogany obsidian, but it's jet black. This is some of my favorite stuff. And, and I like mahogany obsidian as well. This is some of the uh, gray stuff. High, qu high quality gray. It's like the best quality dacite you can find without uh, being obsidian. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it. I don't know how else... Uh, there's a lot of this stuff. It's uh, when you thin it down, it gets very translucent and almost transparent. Uh, you know, this stuff here. So I'll be napping some of this uh, here in Texas in my shop. I can nap a lot of obsidian without worrying about posing a hazard to everybody. And I was waiting for the chance to do it. And now I got my chance. A lot of cool stuff. So there's like three different varieties. I still have to nap and break open these smaller nodules. So I might do that right now, but it's getting a little late. And I'm a little tired. I don't want to mess these up. I want to try to preserve as much of these as I can. I want to try to preserve as much as I can. Okay. Very cool stuff. All right. So let's just break into one of these further. I'll save this black butter looking stuff for a little bit later. A lot of this semi-clear or smoky looking. Let me knock. Let me see if I can find a piece. That's pretty thin. Or I'll just knock off a spall and show you. All right. Let's see. 
I like this stuff too. But this stuff, the clear or almost clear stuff, is a little bit um, a little bit uh, dicey because this kind of stuff is what is hard to find if you get if you get any of it inside your skin. It's hard to hard to take out because you can't see it once it gets thin. And it's just like glass. The shards are exactly like man-made glass. These long skinny shards. Those are highly dangerous. They go right through your shoe or through your clothing. If they get between you and your uh, you know between your leg and your elbow or something it'll work its way in you gotta watch it but this is what I mean it's smoky looking very high quality obsidian all right but I'm not gonna nap that right now I'll wait until it's daylight I can see these better I'm gonna work on some of this stuff all right I think I mentioned that this, I thought this was dacite at first when I first uh, received it, but it naps much better. Here we go. Yeah. It also reminds me of mahogany obsidian, the way it breaks. And the way it scoops out like that, I've got to watch it because it looks like it wants to dive in. Yeah, so I got to be careful. And I got to make sure that the surface of my billet is not clogged up with shards of obsidian. All right. I'm using the swiping technique on this stuff and on all my stuff lately. Because it, it gives you nice long thin flakes. All right, this technique. All right, can everybody see? Somehow the lighting is off. Let me, let me change it here. Had to rearrange these things to clean up from my earlier demonstration. Yeah, sorry about that. Sorry I had to take down the other one, the other video. Let's see if I can do better this time. Nice. It's curved, right? But if I break it in half, I can get two arrowheads out of it. Pretty easy to break in half, and I can get two nice little arrowheads. We're going to focus on this particular piece first. I don't see any major issues. A lot of times with these surface finds, that's what I think these are. Uh, you get cracks, natural cracks, all through the material that's near the cortex. So I'll be working around that if I see any, any cracks. Yeah, I can use inward force without worrying too much. As long as it's not diving in. Looks like it's working pretty good. As long as it doesn't dive in too much, I can probably thin it down. 
As it starts getting really thin, you have to worry about the flakes diving in and doing the reverse hinge stuff. You got to worry about overshots and all that kind of stuff too. When the flakes travel really well, you get the opportunity to run beautiful flakes, but then sometimes they run too far and you get the overshot thing. Yeah. That one I didn't hit hard enough. It didn't go anywhere. Let's try a little bit harder. Yeah. Sweet, sweet stuff. All right, so far so good. The flakes are jumping around and they're flying. Uh, this is nice flexible stuff. When you get flexible material, uh, it'll fly, it'll bounce, it'll get everywhere. But that's that's just the, I guess that's the price you pay for the good quality stuff. It's gonna fly and get everywhere. Yeah, I can see the little shards flying everywhere. All right. Some of them are bouncing off my gloves. Some of them are just coming off very fast because of the hard billet strikes. I don't have to strike it too hard, but it, it is a little bit more dense than obsidian, um, than the clear obsidian. So I gotta strike it a little bit harder, but not too much. a little bit crush crushy yeah very similar to mahogany obsidian okay I think I said that already several times yeah quick fast strikes seem to work well I don't usually have a lot of support for my work pieces. I use the weight of the work piece against itself. So I don't have to hold it really stiff or I don't have to put a backing or a hit it while it's supported by a pad or anything. And I can usually nap it pretty fast. I'm going a little slow on this one because I can get a little too excited by this high quality stuff and then end up with too many pieces. If you know what I mean. I can use some of this shatter down there, but. Uh, a lot of those flakes are curved. I usually try to preserve just the straight ones or retain the straight ones. And I'll throw the curved ones out. can see the gray color. I'm, I'm hoping you can see the gray color. I'm going to try to go as far as I can with the billet. And then switch over to the aluminum flaker for the indirect. This is aluminum also. I'll be switching over to this. One day I'll put an extension in here so it's easier to use as an indirect horizontal punch. 
I am going to use it that way in this video, but it's easier with a longer extension on it. Okay. Yeah, damage control is going to be hopefully pretty easy. If I if I encounter a big old step fracture, it looks like it won't be too hard to get rid of it. As long as I don't do that too many times, we'll take the big bites out of it, I should be in good shape. Might as well do it early. I suppose. I don't want those bites taken out at the end. Let's see. I have to get better at uh, shaping the edges with percussion. And what that means is, you know, just get it prepared for the strikes. Using the abrader like a hammer stone, sometimes. Remove the delicate areas, but also be very careful about creating a good angle on the edge. And a good angle, it depends you have to get used to the material. I can't give you a precise angle. It just depends on the material. The edges cannot be too sharp. Although it's tempting to hit the sharp edges because it, the flakes run so well. But then you start slacking off and the edges become too thin and you just crush them. That hit showered me with flakes. Let's try this here. Yeah, that's the kind of flake I want. I don't want it to be all shattery with a bunch of flakes flying up into my face. I want those to come off clean. Which means, you know, come off without too much of the smaller flakes. It is a little bit shattery and a little bit crushy, but it's not too bad. Yeah, not too not too shabby. I try to I try to uh cover up all the holes in this glove but I'm still getting a little bit of shards in there yeah it's too tempting to just go ahead and hit the edges without repairing them properly I think that's about as thin as I want to go with percussion yeah because I'm losing way too much material off the edges with the direct percussion. I'm going to go to indirect so that I can use smaller platforms and lose less of the edge. And then I can run flakes for damage control a little bit better also to take off step fractures like that. It's also tempting to thin down the middle of these without thinning the ends. Because there is some flexibility in it and it uh, seems like it would be fine. But it's not. You know, it's risky. I gotta thin down the ends first. Okay. So, pretty straightforward stuff. Yeah, really nice.
What kind of artifacts were made from this stuff? Well, I know big blades were made from it. Maybe not this exact material, but obsidian in general. There's a lot of big blades made from it in Central America. Now, in North America, I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure how fond they were of making large blades in North America. Although I have seen them. And there's even some Clovis points made from obsidian, so. It was used in all time periods. The large blades tend to be more recent. You know, the big sword looking blades. They're more recent, as far as I know. This one's just going to be a simple blade. Nothing special. I'm just trying to keep it smooth. Smooth and clear of defects. It doesn't need to be too thin. Obsidian is easily resharpened. So it doesn't need to be really thin to be effective. You can get a sharp edge on it. Even if it's thick, you can get a sharp edge on it pretty easily. I gotta make sure it stays flat. Just for the guys that want to make flat pieces, if you look at artifacts, they're kind of wonky. The edges are not always completely straight. They got this curve in it like this sometimes, and they just go with the flow. Back in the day, They're, the edges are not completely straight. You, you'll see it on the real ones. And that's because they were being very aggressive with it, and they just kind of went with the flow. They took a little bit too much off. Oh well, just go with it. That's what I've noticed anyway. But I'm going to be careful with it and try to keep it as straight as I can. This actually sharpens up really well. And what I mean by that is the edge stays thin. See that? I can strike those thin edges and it stays thin. It doesn't crush, which is very nice. I'm going to take them back a little bit because I need to run some flakes off the edge. I need to make them a little stronger so I can thin down some of those lumps yeah I don't know there's not much to learn on these things it's just straightforward napping you know just got to be careful there's no real special techniques for this stuff That's why it's kind of good for the new guys, but um, glass in general is a little bit hazardous uh, as far as the shards. The dust from glass is not nearly as hazardous as the dust from uh, flint or chert. You know, the, the uh, dust from the glass or obsidian doesn't interact with the chemicals in your lungs. Not like or flint will 
just so you know. It's safer for your lungs to be an obsidian napper than it is to be a chert napper or a flint napper. And if you don't mind all the cuts. This stuff, I'm, I'm double gloving it because there's no way I can nap this safely without gloves. See, I want to try to avoid step fractures like that, and I can usually run a good flake. The last flake was right there, right? But it stopped before it had a chance to skin that off. So, I've got to be careful in that uh, I can't overestimate this stuff. And there's different consistencies, too. It gets rough up here. But it's nice and smooth, like right there and down here. But up here, it's kind of rough. And it naps differently. A little bit. It's very subtle, but there is a difference. I can nap it with steel also, but aluminum tends to crush the edge less. Which is pretty obvious. The softer the material that you're using to nap, in general, the less crushing you get. In general. If you don't hit it right, you're gonna get it crushing anyway. You're gonna get it to crush anyway. If you're not if you're not hitting it right, if you're hitting it with too much inward force or you're trying to do too much with too little edge, you'll crush everything. You don't need much inward force at all to produce a flake that travels inward. But as you nap, you know, going from chert to obsidian, it's not that hard to make the transition. You just got to back off a little bit. Just a little bit. So I'm regularizing it to see where the opportunities are. It's already really, really thin. I mean, this is so easy to thin down, relatively speaking. Compared to chert and flint, it's so easy to thin this down, it's not even funny. And yes, it can get too thin. Believe it or not. You don't want it to get too thin. You know, you have a lot of fun running flakes and then all of a sudden it gets too thin in one spot and, then it, and that's where it'll break. Now I can probably run some long pressure flakes too, but I can't run them to the middle. I gotta start running some more flakes to thin it down just a little bit more, not much. Just a little bit. I'm hitting into that rough area. There is a step fracture there, but it's not too bad. I'm not too worried about that. I think I can get that from the other side. If I can't, I can use the trick where you hit the face of that step fracture and knock off a flake you know with the spatula tool 
and since this runs flakes so easily I might be, might be able to just pressure flake that off yeah they're just undetached flakes yeah and that in this case let's see if I can push off on this one here so some so some of those step fractures were just some of those step fractures were just undetached flakes that tool is a little bit too big let's see where's my other one little spatula tool I just pushed off a flake right there I just pushed off another one right there they flattened that out really well Trying to pick out this undetached flake here, this moon shaped or crescent moon shaped flake. There it goes. That flew and hit my forehead. <laughs> that flake went up and fit, hit my forehead. Yeah, so wear, wear the goggles for sure. Or, you know, something on your eyes. I can't wear goggles, but I do wear my reader glasses. But I have to be picky about those too because I lose my depth perception if they're low quality glasses. Yeah. I used to just go around and look for the cheapest readers I could find, but I found that it messes with my depth perception if they're low quality reader glasses, you know, magnifiers. Just simple non-prescription magnifiers. If they're low quality, it'll mess with my depth perception. Same with goggles. Although goggles are, you know, safer. Because it protects the sides of your eyes as well. I don't get much... I don't get many flakes coming in from the sides. They're all coming in from the front. Unless they're bouncing off something and then hitting the sides of my face. But that doesn't happen very often at all. I'm going to open space on either side of me right now. If I'm in my van, then yeah, sometimes the flakes bounce off the side of the van and come back and hit me in the side of the head. But not this time. Not gonna get me like that this time. Yeah, it's so easy to flake to get it thin, but then you're stuck with now. How do I generate a bold flake to you know skin a lot of that stuff off so it looks more smooth? I don't know. It's gonna. It's getting a little bit concave in there. Yeah. Obsidian does not like to be napped into the concave areas. It'll dive. Be careful even with the short flakes. I can probably get that step fracture out, but I'm gonna have to reduce the width. But as I'm as I'm taking care of other thick spots, it'll get more narrow. And then when it gets narrow enough and I'm close enough to this obstacle, like from right here, I can probably hit a bold flake into that area and clean that up. That's what I'm hoping. It's already thin enough to be an, an artifact looking thing. I don't need to thin it much more, if any. 
I could already put an edge on it. The width, the thickness ratio. What is it at this stage? I don't know, but it's pretty good. But I want it to be smooth. Yeah. Smooth and thin. Nice. I was afraid of that one because I actually put a pretty good amount of force behind it. I gotta watch the terminations. If they feather out, fine. But you put a lot of force into it and it starts diving. That's when you run into problems. So just the minimal amount of flakes to get the surface smooth. Yeah. See, I only needed three good flakes and it's smooth. I don't have to do too much on that side anymore. Nope. I just got to take care of the lumps on the other side. And hopefully, as I take care of this lump, lumpy area under here, I can run a flake down in through here and catch the back side of that. Maybe. Maybe. The symmetry is off. Maybe if I correct the symmetry, I'll get closer to that. This side is smooth enough already. There's just one little step right there, but I can probably even get that with the pressure flake from that side. Yeah. Now it's just a matter of making it symmetrical. I've already taken care of the major issues except one spot. Yeah. So I do want to attack that one spot. Let's see, what about this? Yeah, I'm going to attack that one spot. That's the last little area. All right. I'm going to make it symmetrical now. reducing some of this. I see some undetached flakes right there. Hold on. See these right there? No? Good. You don't want to see those anyway. Yeah, I just pushed it off. Easy peasy. Much easier than with chert. Or flint. Oh yes. So nice. A lot of new guys have a very hard time getting to this stage where it's wide and thin. Even with obsidian when it is so easy to run long flakes. I had trouble with that, of course, in the beginning. I'm trying to remember what my issues were, or what I thought my issues were. Yeah, I think my main issue was just snapping it in half by accident. Working the base and the tip late in the process, and then snapping the whole thing by my base work and tip work. You gotta do your base work and tip work before you do the center work. If possible. So you don't have to come back later and do it. Because coming back later and doing that seems like it might be a good strategy, but it usually does not work. Alright. 
I got to focus now. I'll lose my my train of thought. Yeah, there really is a sequence when you're doing damage control. Otherwise, it's not that bad. The sequence of flake removals is not that critical, but it does get critical as you are approaching the final thickness and trying to do damage control. I just wanted to remove that one flake. It was bugging me. The undetached flake. Yep. So brushing gently. Um, it's very gentle brushing. You don't need to go crazy grinding obsidian. It's very, very gentle, the abrading stage. Even at the beginning, it's still very gentle stuff. All right. That was a relatively hard hit because I wanted the long flake, but it's I'm trying to run it through a, a that crumbly kind of rough area. See I tried to run a flake through here, but it stopped. Now the only option is to run a flake this way or that way and then eventually run a flake this way I don't know I don't trust it there's a lot of dips in there before you get to this backside there's a dip right here I could just create a, a you know a continuous step fracture right here it'll you know stop right there at that it won't continue and wipe, wipe that out unless I get more narrow looks like There is a lump here, and there's a lump there. I'll probably take that out first before I go in that way. But it's time to start shaking out the flakes from the shoes because I'm moving my feet around, and I don't want to be stepping on the flakes inside my shoe. Hold on. I'm going to move my feet around because I'm going to switch over to pressure flaking. And usually I have to reposition a little bit. And then I have to reposition back for the uh, indirect percussion. Some of you guys are just old hats at this stuff. This is just old news. You can do better than I can on this kind of stuff. I'm going to regularize it before I continue with the indirect percussion. Let's take the glove off so I can zoom in a little bit better. And then put the glove back on. And we'll stay at this zoom for a while and see how it works. Right? Right. Good? Good. Are you able to only partially see? Yes? All right. Perfect. Golly, that's so nice. You can slab this stuff. Push off beautiful flakes. Oh, yeah. So what am I doing just doing random stuff? Why don't I do the flake over grind? You know that the ancient Egyptians did the flake over grind, right? Everybody knows? No? There are blades out there made by Egyptians that are flake over grind. They used flint. They would grind down the preforms. Well, you know, both sides smooth and convex. And they would only flake one side of the blade. The other blade, the other side was perfectly smooth. Have you seen those? If not, let me know in the comments and I'll see if I can find the link to it. 
So flake over grind is not a modern thing. I think they did it in China as well. Don't quote me on that one, but I think the Chinese, Neolithic Chinese were, were doing the flake over grind also. Not all, all of them, you know, not the whole area that is now China. There were certain areas they're finding flint arrowheads in certain areas that appeared to be pre-ground or ground after flaking. You know, they would flake it and they would get it to the rough shape and then they would grind the rest of it so it would, you would see the, the grinding marks over the flake marks. That's like grind over flake instead of flake over grind. And yes, that's an old technique also. Grind over flake. But I'm sure you guys know all that stuff, right? Right? No? You don't know about grind over flake? That's how they used to make axes. Neolithic stone axes. Grind over flake. They also made arrowheads that way. In the Neolithic. They shared their ideas. I don't know how they did it, but... They were sharing ideas and several cultures were doing it. You might say, yeah, yeah, we know about the grind over flake in Europe. We know that. It's cheating. Yeah. It's supposed to be only grinding, grinding. That's it. Just grinding, grinding. That's supposed to be grind over flake yeah I know it's cheating so there you go I took that off let's see if I can continue my streak of nice cosmetic flaking some of you might be saying go back to the other stage in the beginning where it was thick I want to see how you get it, the preliminary thinning. Did you miss it? I bet you missed that part. See, these are not going too much further than halfway, which kind of worries me because I had to hit that pretty hard and only went halfway. That's not good. That's not that good. That means I can't thin it down as well as I thought, perhaps. I mean, of course it's good that it went and it terminated with a feather termination, and maybe it shouldn't go further than that, but it wouldn't have hurt to go further, right? It would have been cool. Where was that last one? It was here. It would have, it wouldn't hurt to go a little bit further than that. It was still a good flake though. Yeah. And I'm getting closer to this to the back side of this step fracture. By removing flakes along here, doing this stuff, I'm getting closer to this obstacle. So the sequence is important at this stage if you're doing damage control just so you know just so you know the reasoning behind what I'm doing some of you might be saying wait wait it's already thin stop yeah it is already thin but I'm not gonna stop because I can go further oh yeah why stop when you can go further? Just a little bit thinner. Just a little bit. What a lot of you want to do in your flit napping, and I heard you guys, I've been napping with you guys. Just a little bit thinner. That's all I ask. I hear you guys saying. 
what's so hard about going just a little bit thinner you know when you're doing your own flint napping talking to the stone and going just a little bit thinner please just a little bit thinner that's all I ask paper thin flakes that's all I ask just give me some of these miracle flakes yeah you can get the miracle flakes on obsidian this is much better than that site okay it might look like that site but it ain't no 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 this is nice beautiful stuff it's nothing like the dacite I was napping just a little while ago. Oh no. It might look the same. And it, you know, it might fool you into thinking that it's dacite. And if you see artifacts made out of this stuff, you might think, see, they made beautiful points out of this dacite crud. And it uh, turns out it's not dacite. It's beautifully flaking obsidian. I was too aggressive there. So I end up with a step. Unfortunate, but it is what it is. Yeah. That's what I get for just a little bit thinner. It didn't want to go all the way. It didn't want to go into that mess. It stopped. Yeah. Yep. Well, just shoot a flake from the base up in here. See that ridge? Just shoot a flake up in there. Yeah, that's why you guys break them in half. Tapping on the base. I don't think so. I don't think I'm going to do that. The only way I'm going to be able to get that now is to come over from this side. I'm not going to shoot a flake up from the base. You crazy? Yeah, I know you are. That's how you break them. Because you guys are nutballs. You're nuts. If you think I'm going to come up from the base to get that. I'm just going to leave it. As a show of my lack of cosmetic skill here. As I was saying that, oh, it's so beautiful and so nice. And then, dunk, I create a step. Oh, well. That's what I get. Yeah, I can probably get, clean that up a little bit. Yeah, I can probably clean it up a little bit. Again, just gentle grinding. You don't need a lot of heavy grinding on obsidian. Now, sometimes I say you need a big, strong edge. Yep, yeah, that's at the beginning stages. Sometimes you do need a big, strong, thick edge. All right, all right. I don't disagree with that. But it's not always necessary. See, I ran a flake there. Is that close enough to running a flake from the base, from the very tip? Is that close enough? It is for me. Oh, yeah. And I'm just doing this randomly, kind of. It's opportunistically. I'm not really preparing separate platforms, although in a perfect world... I would be preparing separate, very specific platforms. I'm just trying to do damage control. So I managed to lessen the look of that step fracture. A lot of times that's good enough for me, but uh, I'm starting to create an island. Just so I can lessen the look of that step fracture, I kind of created another one there so it looks kind of like we're going to the islands again just pick at it yeah I'm gonna have to pick at it I have to pick at these 
areas. Hold on. Let's sharpen this up. Some of you are saying, you don't need to go no thinner, okay? Forget about the stuff fractures. Forget it. I know. Just hold on. I'll forget them out of it. I'll forget about them in a minute. All right, in a minute. Just give me a minute. While I talk to the stone, I give it a stern talking to. Yeah, you gotta be stern. I thought you said you're supposed to tiptoe. Tiptoe. Yeah, well. You gotta know when to tiptoe and when to be stern. Yeah. Don't ask me when or exactly what formula you go by. Because I don't got no formula. I just do it. I just do it. That's it. If it works, it works. If it don't, it don't. I got years and years of practice on damage control. So at some point, some of this stuff becomes nothing but damage control toward the end. Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes that's all I'm doing. I go for the gusto in the beginning and then I clean up all the nastiness at the end. And I probably have said before that it might not be a good strategy. You should get nice and smooth in, in the middle stage so that all you got to do is clean up the edges. Yeah, I might have said that. But I'll probably never nap the same style of biface the same way twice. I don't know. I haven't really thought about that aspect. Do I nap always the same way? I kind, you know, obviously you have to nap it in kind of the same way to get the same shape and the same desired flake pattern. Even if it's random, it's gonna look random. to your brain because I'm obviously not trying for pattern flaking your brain's got to say yep this is this is the way you normally randomly do it yep but sometimes a question comes up someone might say yeah, I understand mostly what you do, but some of the stuff you do, I don't get it. I don't get it. Why do you do it like that? You didn't do it like that last time. Or I don't see why you did this, you know, off sequence. You usually do this and that and this, but now I'm baffled by your insistence on doing it some other way. Yeah. I'm pushing the limits here. And if I can't clear that out, if I can't clear this island I'm developing, if I can't clear that out, I'll be embarrassed. Yeah. I just wanted to thin that. It looked lumpy to me right there. So I got it thin. It's kind of steppy, so I'm going to have to fix that. Oh, yes. Fixing it, fixing it, fixing it. Just for you guys, because I probably would have stopped a while ago if it was just me. I want to see how far I can go with the thinning. That's going to look ugly now if I don't get it. If I don't remove it. Yep. I'm just checking to see how far I can send some of these pressure flakes inward. Looks like not too far. I pushed really hard on that one. I could run that ridge and then get up in there. Good. 
if I do it right. Passive pressure. Just keep pushing on it until it releases by itself. Sometimes those flakes travel. It did travel. See that? But not far enough. But the 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 uh, the lesson is I can I can push that far, whatever that distance is. But it looks like that distance is not far enough. Yeah, it's like we're gonna have an island. Looks that way. Unless I set up for a percussion flake, but it's already way too thin. I'll measure here in a minute. Yeah, I'll measure in a minute. Let me regularize this. The auction went well, by the way. Everyone communicated. Everything's cool. I like it when all the communication is done quickly. Every, I know everybody's information and payment preferences, and addresses, and everything, the shipping looks like it'll be go, going smoothly. I like it when people send me their address and then they say, oops, I made a mistake. I need to correct it. Yes, please. Send me the correction because that's one of my pet peeves. I like to get the shipping right. I don't like it to have any shipping mishaps. I don't like to have any email mishaps. I found an email in my spam folder that I missed from like four days ago. Stupid Gmail. Luckily it wasn't a major issue. Nope, it was not a major issue. But I've had major issues end up in the spam folder and I hadn't responded to somebody in days and days and they're wondering they're wondering what's up what's up yeah sometimes depending on how you write your emails it ends up in the spam folder and if your email name has a lot of numbers in it like if you were uh, John Smith one two three four five six seven eight nine that's probably going to go in the spam folder. Yeah. That's what happened to one of my guys. Bunch of numbers in his email name. Oh, that one. That one hurt. Because I took off a lot of the edge on this side but I think I cleared out what I needed to clear out yes did it do it yeah at what price how much did I have to pay for that one Ooh, that I paid a heavy price for that one Yeah, I think there's an old saying, you know, uh, whatever you end up saying with your mouth, you got to pay the price with your butt. <laughs> Watch what you say, because you're going to have to pay with your ass. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. 
but it looks a little bit better right maybe no it don't look no betters yeah i was afraid of that but this is a video for instruction right so we're gonna we're gonna take it to the max just for instruction purposes did it do it i tried another cosmetic flake oh it almost did it see that it missed that what a goober you are you could have fanned that way there's no reason for you not to and you didn't Why did it do that? It was going so well, and then it took a turn and didn't clear that off. Such a goober. It's such a goober. Yep. What did I have to pay for that one? I had to pay for that one pretty good. That one cost me a lot of money, too. Yeah. You might be saying, okay, you can stop now. Stop now. Yeah, stop now. <laughs> if I stop now, it wouldn't be one of the videos on my channel, now would it? I take risks. I open my mouth and I end up paying with my ass a lot. Yeah. Oh yeah, I gotta, I talk smack a lot. Yep, I get overconfident. Oh yes. You might be saying, I ain't heard, I ain't, hey, I ain't never heard you talk that way. Yeah, it's getting late. That's what I'm blaming it on. It's my story. Yep. It's getting late. I'm having way too much fun with this. This obsidian is getting me giddy. <laughs> Making me woozy and intoxicated. Yeah. I don't get a chance to nap really good stuff like this very often. Because everyone wants to see the difficult stuff. And yeah, this can be difficult too. Difficult to not break. Yeah. Oh gosh. If I was only really good at pressure flaking I wouldn't be having these problems I wouldn't be having so many problems if I could just pressure flake this like the guys that make these big blades with these long nice pressure flakes if only I just don't like pressure flaking because of that stuff that's one of the things I don't like See that? See that? I don't like those. I get more of those with pressure flakes than anything else. And it probably because I'm hitting the pad. No, it was up above the pad there. You not don't have no slots on your pad, man. Yeah, I know. I don't need slots on my pad, man. Don't need no stinking slots. No. So, uh, get back off me. Yeah. However they say it. I, was, I 
got to get the symmetry back. I'm going to have to take off some of this edge. But there's some nasty stuff right there that I can try to knock off. Really thin miracle flakes. As long as I make these really thin miracle flakes, I'm okay. Yeah. Want to see how thin it is? I'll show you. I, I don't know how thin it is, but I'm going to show you. That wasn't a miracle flake, though, because it didn't go all the way. It stopped before doing the damage control I wanted it to. Can I hit it again? Hit it again, and maybe it'll continue? Maybe. Miracle thin. Yeah. Thin. Look how thin that little piece sticking out right there is. Woo! It'll spoil you. It'll make you giddy and feel intoxicated. But these flakes are so thin. It makes you feel like you can do anything. Yep. Where are we going to go? Where are we going to go with this? We're going to take it just a little bit further. Yes. Oh, we tried. There we go. Save the day. It did do it that time. Why it did it like that? I have no idea. I thought I was going to end up with an island, but I got a miracle flake. It's super thin. Oh, yes. Look at that. Look at it. There. Good enough? I think so. Now we just gotta clean up the edge. That's it. Clean up the edge. I'm gonna run a few more flakes in the tip area that are gonna be longish. So I have to take I have to take back this area here. See how it's bitten there? I gotta take it back. And when I take it back, I can run flakes in. Yep. All right. Now, do I want to make a long, narrow, pointy tip? No, no, no. I do not. What am I going to do about this square edge right there? I mean, it's not just the bite. It's the square edge I gotta take back. Well that's that's when you gotta tiptoe. Gotta be very gentle with that one so you don't lose too much width. Yeah. That's when you gotta be gentle with it. I can't be aggressive in this area because it's you're gonna lose I'm gonna lose too much width if I am too aggressive in that area. Is it getting really narrow? I forgot to, to to take the width to thickness ratio earlier. Let's do it now while I still have a a chance for a good ratio. Let's, let's do the millimeter thing because it's so much easier. It's like 82, 83. The thickness is eight. It's 10 to one. Yeah, eight thick and eighty wide. Yeah, ten to one. Let's do that again. It's not eighty; it's sixty. Dummy! I thought that was an eight. See that? It looks like an eight, right? It looks like an eight. Sorry, sixty-two by by eight. That's almost eight to one. Yeah. Seven in some spots. 
and eight in other spots. Okay, so it's almost eight to one. Sorry. Even I was surprised at that number. I had to remeasure it. Yeah. Eight to one. Okay, let's see. Let's finish this. Let us finish this. Oh, I'm looking over here on the side. Over here, I've got uh, this uh, drop cloth over a bunch of my equipment over here. And it's covered with flakes. They jumped over there. I can see them because they're dark. That's one reason why I like the dacite. I can see all the flakes. If it was regular obsidian, the clear type, I wouldn't be able to see half those flakes. And I would think I would be thinking it's nice and clean on there, on that draw cloth. And there would be little clear shards just lurking on there, and I I, I would be thinking that eh, I could just shake it off. Don't need my glasses on or anything. There's no shards on there. And then shake it off and then get a bunch of shards right in the face. Oh yeah. Lovely thoughts, huh? Well, you gotta think about that stuff. When you're napping, you gotta think about the hazards of the waste. Hazard is waste. Yeah. How did they do this back in the day when this glass and the obsidian is so hazardous? Well, you do what Ishii used to do. He, he would go off into an area away from the campsite and nap. Yeah. You don't nap in the campsite with this stuff. He went off in some other area, got some mud or clay, spread it on his face before he started napping, and then sit down to nap. And I bet you he did not do it barefoot. Bet you he had moccasins or sandals on. Bet you. That's what I would do. I wouldn't nap without my shoes on or my moccasins or sandals. I would not. No way. You might say, well, it, it, the cuts are so clean, they'll heal up quick. Is it going to heal up quicker than I get hungry? Mm -hmm. I'm going to get hungry pretty fast. I don't want to be sitting around with a bum foot for days waiting for it to heal, even though it's going to heal perfectly nicely. I'm going to be pretty hungry by that time oh yeah all right so what do I, what should I do with the tip if I do pressure flaking I'm going to get a bunch of little bunch of little flakes instead of the bold ones which is pretty common I suppose with artifacts but I want some more bold flakes near the tip so I'm going to abrade a little bit And do some indirect percussion on the tip. Instead of taking all that time doing the little bitty pressure flakes. Just very gently. Gently is a flit napping term. It's related to tiptoe through the tulips. Gently, gently. doing it when I don't need to it's for the video you know how it goes yeah it's, I don't know I don't know this area is rough see how it's different in consistency 
that worries me a little bit. I'm not sweating, but it does worry me a little bit that I'm napping into that rough area. The flakes don't come off clean sometimes in rough areas. Did it do it? Where's my where's my picking tool? There it is. Pick it. Yes, it did it. All right, so that's that's good enough there. A little bit on the other side, and then I can pressure flake it. stuff is in between obsidian and dacite I like it it's not as crushy as obsidian but it's not as stubborn on the flake travel as dacite All right, let's see. That's it. One of the little pups is hurling right outside the door. What did he eat? These guys eat all kinds of stuff. They like to eat their bedding. They like to chew on the blankets and stuff. I got little blankets out there. Once in a while, some of them will chew up a corner of the blanket. Start coughing and hurling, and then you'll I'll see a little lump of thread in the yard. But you guys are not supposed to be eating the blankets. Does it taste good? No. Why you do it then? It don't taste like chicken. It's like garbage. Maybe that's what they like. They like garbage. Yeah, there's no maybe there. They love garbage. Time for the edge work with the pressure flaker. About time, huh? Yeah. Hour and 24 minutes. My daughter and I were just talking the other day about the length of movies. They're getting longer and longer, obviously. But she was thinking, why does this movie... They went to go see a movie the other night. I didn't go, right? 
They went with their mom. The uh, she sang, "Yeah, I want to go to the movies, but it's so long. I'm trying to pick one. My daughter was trying to pick one that wasn't so long." I kind of like the long format movies myself. I've seen movies of all sorts of lengths, and I do kind of like the long format. If I'm going to watch a movie, I want to watch a movie. Oh, yeah. I want to watch a long time. I do. I like the long format. I don't like it when there's a lot of drama, as long as the action is there. I don't mind watching a long format movie with a lot of action. What do they go see? They still go see the, the children's movies. They're all grown up, but they still went and they saw Puss in Boots or something. Yeah. I remember being that age and all I wanted to watch was movies that fight zombies and stuff, I guess. Yeah. Movies where you're fighting zombies or chainsaw massacre guys or something like that. You know, that kind of movie. Yeah, we would watch Disney movies and we'd watch Star Wars. It's even back then it was kind of Disney esque, very theatrical, very costumey. Yep. Anyway, this is going to be like one of those long format movies where it takes forever. The action's not that great either. This is slow going. Do you want to learn how to go do the slow nap? Yeah. Do ya? This is what's gonna happen on this one. I'm slow napping this one. Come on. I'm trying to be careful and you're not cooperating all that well. The stone isn't cooperating all that well. I want to get a clean edge. A nice little snap, snappy doodles. Nothing, no crunch, no crunchy crunches. <laughs> What am I saying? Can you see what I'm doing? No? Good. Like I said before, I don't want to give away all my secrets. Yeah, I do. What am I going to do with them? What am I going to do with my secrets? I can't do nothing with them. They end up in a box up in my brain. Yeah. What am I going to do with them up there? Just save them. Make points and stuff. Yeah, it would be okay if it was just for me, I suppose. After, after a while, you get to the stage where you can make almost anything you want. And you're going, eh, well. I'm not that excited about making a point for myself anymore, because I can make basically whatever I want. I can do it whenever I want. 
You say to yourself, all right, I'll do it later. Make a point later. And if I end up giving away the point that I just made, oh, well, I can make another one. And you end up not making anything for yourself. Well, with me anyway. I don't have a, a collection for myself. The only thing I collect is little pieces of cool looking stone. I got a lot of little cool flakes. But then now I'm ending up getting, getting rid of those too. What am I going to do with them? They're just going to sit there. I'm going to sit there for the laters. I'll get to that laters. Yeah. Someday. I'll get to it one of these days. And then day, days pass and you never get to it. Because it's really not that exciting. You know you can do it. It's like, hmm. Yeah, it becomes like an errand. Yeah, I can make one for myself, but it's like, you know, going buying food for yourself. Yeah, I can, I, I, you know, it's just, yeah, I like buying food for myself, but, you know, it's not like I get overly excited. I can make a point to satisfy my craving for a certain point. And once I get it made, okay, well, satisfied that craving, now what? What am I going to do with it? Nothing. Uh-oh, that's so dangerous. When I start flaking and they're not, they're thinking they're not going to be cooperating with me. And I start flaking and, I, and the edge doesn't yield anything. That's when I worry. That's when I know I'm, get, I'm going a little bit too far. I'm trying to do a little bit too much. I'm trying to clean off a little bit too much if it starts to resist me on the edge. Yeah. All right, so I have to, I'm going to have to sharpen this without grinding. Hour and 33 minutes. Yeah, it's still not too bad. When it starts getting near the two hour mark, then yeah, it's like ridiculous. Yeah. Especially when you can't see. Can't see, huh? What does the edge look like? I'm trying to get it sharp with no lumpies. Yeah, with no lumps. Just a sharp edge. It's a little bit serrated. Using the wrong side of the pad too. I'm going to make double-sided pads coming up here shortly. That way I don't have to think about what side is the correct side. Just make it double-sided. Same on both sides. Much less to think about. Well, maybe not much less, but it definitely is less to think about. Little minute flakes. Make sure there's no crushing. Can you see? It's 
basically just popping off the deltas and taking some surface with it if it's thick near that surface. Taking some of the surface with you if it's thick, but you got to be looking, constantly looking at the other side and looking at the edge and seeing where it's thick, where you can push off a flake to make it thin and use a sharp tool, relatively sharp, doesn't have to be that sharp. But the less contact you make with the edge, the easier it is to just pop the flake off. Just pop the little flakes off. Find a flat spot and try to pop them off without making a step fracture. And it's, it's uh, much easier if you hold it vertically. See how I'm holding the workpiece it's almost vertical now you can do percussion that way too with it almost vertical although I hardly ever do it that way because you know I can't do it it's a horizontal punch I can't be doing it like this because the angle of the punch will have to be up here somewhere now, if someone was holding it, I could do a vertical horizontal punch technique like I do my pressure flake. But until I get an assistant, a real assistant, I'm not going to be able to do it in the best way possible. If I had an assistant, uh, maybe I can get a robot to hold the horizontal punch instead of a, an assistant. Yeah. Wouldn't that be something? We keep talking about robots. We used to watch movies with robots in them all the time. There's hardly any movies with robots in them. You ever notice that? I mean, either they're fully humanized androids, or there's no robot. Well, maybe the exception of R2-D2. But other than that, Did, did R2 spoil it for all the other robots? He got the patent on the robot and no one else can copy that idea now? Yeah? They own the patent on the robots. Yeah. Patent infringement. I'm trying to think of the movies that have these... Uh, primitive robots in them that are not human, almost human. I think Blade Runner made the the almost human robot thing the most appealing one to watch. Yeah. That female robot in that movie. Oh boy. Nobody wanted to see primitive robots no more after that. Nope. Well, they call them androids, right? After seeing the possibility for androids, no one wanted to go back to the primitive stuff. Yep. There we go. Clean off mess with those flakes. How difficult would it be to teach a robot how to flint nap? You'd have to program some sort of formula, right? I mean, some sort of code. How can you specify what to do with flint napping? It wouldn't be random anymore, would it? So 
So that tells you the less random it is in the past, the more robotic the nappers. These parallel flake points, very regular patterning. That's how a robot would do it. There would be no reason to do it randomly if you could do it patterned. Your thinking is minimized. Other than the damage control, you got to set up. You know, you got to set up the edge. But how would a robot know when when to choose the opportunities? Or which opportunities to choose first. There would have to be some randomness in there. So he could at least get started. And then from there. Uh, proceed according to plan. With the beginning stages. You could have. Sometimes there's so many possibilities. There's almost an infinite number of possibilities in the beginning. On where to go. And what to do. You would have to. Probably do it randomly in the beginning and then self-correct. Kind of like what I do, but... Uh, sometimes I don't self-correct, I just continue. See the, what the limits of the material are. See what else I can do. Look at how it aesthetically pleasing it is, according to my human sensibilities. How do you put human sensibilities into a robot? You don't. You just program a, a procedure. That's it. There's no sensibilities. There's nothing... Sensibility's got nothing to do with it, if it's a machine. That reminds me, one of these days I'm going to go into different edge treatments. Because what, what this is basically is just picking at the edge. But there are other ways to create edges on these things. You don't have to be picking at it like this. This is... This is similar to serrations. When you just pick at the edges until they get sharp. But there are other ways to do it. Oh yes. You can zigzag it. There are ways to zigzag the edges. Instead of picking down in one direction the whole time. You can turn it over and zigzag it. It takes longer but it produces a very sharp edge. There's also the alternate uh, alternate pop-outs. You do, you do spaced pop-outs and then you turn it over and you do the pop-outs in between those. And uh, depending on how good you are, you can create a lot of scooped out pop-outs and you can produce a hollow ground effect with all your scoop outs. But you gotta learn how to scoop it out. I've been trying to do that technique where I scoop out with each pop out. But the trick is to scoop it out and pop it out without ruining the edge, the line of the edge. I always take bites out of the edge by accident. Yeah, how do you do it without taking so many bites out of the edge? I don't know. I still haven't figured that one out. At least not with the techniques that I've been using. So that's it. It sharpened all the way around. Because I just picked at it until I got no more dull spots. And no more lumps. Let's zoom out. It's smaller than you thought, huh? But it's smooth. Smooth. Literally, it feels smooth, and it looks smooth. Yeah, there's a couple areas, but 
you know if you smooth it out you don't have to grind it to get rid of the sharp edges this is very sharp dacite or obsidian and I don't feel any anything that'll cut me nothing will cut me on this edge there's no big I don't know how to how to explain there's no protrusions that are sharp that'll cut on the edge there's a few that are kind of sharp right here but I think I've achieved the effect of smoothness even though it's not patterned it's kind of random well it is random I could probably thin it down a little bit more but that's it I'm not gonna do it the edge quality is just picked I just picked at it until I didn't see any more dull spots let's try to zoom in I just kept picking off anything that looked dull there's actually a spot right here I could pick off but the larger the blade the more tedious this process is you know I could push down right here so that looks dull as an example but I just picked off everything that I could see that was dull and you can see what's dull by the uh, the uh, powdery look to it hold on where's my pad <coughs> I lost the pad I lost the pad all right so it's hiding somewhere in between these little deltas I saw some white powdery areas Stop messing with it. I don't want to see any white powdery areas. I'll just pick at it. Keep picking at it until I don't see any dull spots that are obvious. I'll try to get all of them. And that's how I sharpen them usually. But like I said, there are other ways to do it. This is just the most straightforward way. You just pick at it until you don't see any dull spots. Uh, it's not perfect because I still see some dull areas like right there and probably right there. Various dull areas from the abrading earlier. But as long as it feels sharp and a little bit like a sawtooth effect, that'll cut. Oh yes. All right, my pad, where did my pad go? Dang it. Anyway, I'll stop messing with it. Hope that was okay. I like this material a lot. I don't mind spending hours and hours with this material. This is really good stuff. Okay, so there you go. Let's see, do I have a background? No, that's all right. That's it.